the reason that the host of packing games are introduced is because we want to use this study the host of packing dimensions. Now the following theorem will give the connection between the host of packing game and the host of packing dimensions. Theorem: the host of respectively packing dimension of a Borel subset S in Rt is the supremum of delta such that S is delta dimensionally host of or respectively packing winning. The theorem tells you as long as you know the information of delta dimensionally host of or packing winning about the given braille set S, then you will know the host of and the packing dimension of that set. And now let's give the sketch of the proof in the house golf case, and the packing case will be similar. Remember the thing we want to prove is that the house of dimension of S is equal to the supremum of the set of the set of all deltas such that S is delta dimensionally host of winning. And there are two directions to prove. And we begin by proving that the left hand side is greater or equal to delta where delta is where S is a delta dimensionally host of winning. Let's first fix beta greater than zero such that S is delta dimensionally host of beta winning. And this beta is sufficiently small. Now we consider a strategy for Alice to win the delta dimensional host of beta game with target set S. And the amazing part of their proof is that the strategy is not deterministic. It is random, which involves some sort of probability theory. Each k greater or equal to zero, we let the set E sub k be the union of all sets A sub k that Alice might choose according to her strategy in response to some positive sequence of moves that Bob could play. And here we still let rho sub k to be equal to beta raised to the power k times so naught. And now we consider the set C, which is defined to be the intersection of all unions where x sub k is in E k, union of all those balls centered at x k with radius rho sub k. And here's some facts about E sub k and C. This E sub k can be proved to be 3 rho k separated. And the set C is closed 
and totally disconnect it. Here we leak a remark that C is a set of all possible outcomes of the game when Alice plays her strategy. Now let me draw a picture. First, we take the union of the all possible balls This is chosen by Bob, but the E sub K consists of the choices of Alice. So we have the balls. And remember, since E K is three row K separated, those balls clearly don't intersect with each other. Since the distances between their centers are always greater or equal to Read OK. And now you are going to take the intersections when k from uh, k equals 0 to infinity. What you are going to do for each intersection, uh, for the intersections, you are going to take the smaller and smaller circles centered at the same point for each circle. And this is something that you will get. And you will take the intersection in each realm. And in the end, in each intersection of those balls, you will just get one point because the radii is shrinking. And those points will be the all, all possible outcomes of the game. In order to bound the hostile dimension of C, we we'll introduce a probability measure on C by considering the scenario where Alice plays according to her winning strategy and Bob plays randomly. And this, in my opinion, is the most amazing part of the proof. Specifically, on the Kether Bob chooses the point X sub K in A sub K. Remember this A sub K is a finite set. And Bob chooses the point in this finite set uniformly at random. That means it is chosen independently and at the same time it chooses it independently of all previous choices. And this yields a random game whose outcome x infinity is distributed according to some probability measure mu on C. Now let's fix some element in C. And for each k greater or equal to 0, let x sub k in e sub k be chosen such that this x is in 
this ball, the ball centered at xk with radius rho sub k. Now you can prove the following two claims. Claim 1, that you have the intersection of the ball centered at x with radius rho sub k with c is containing the ball centered at x sub k with radius rho sub k. And it follows from this claim that you can verify the second claim that says the probability of measure of this ball is less than or equal to the measure of the ball centered at sk because you know this measure is supported on c and uh, by the fact that bob On the case term, Bob chooses the point x sub k in a k uniformly and random, independently of all previous choices. You should be able easily see that this is equal to the product from i equal to 0 to k of 1 over the number of points in a sub i because of the independence and the uniform choices. I need to give a lower bound for the Hausdorff dimension of S. And to this end, we shall use the rogers taylor trickle theorem. And in particular, we are using this one. So which says, if you have a lower bound for the pointwise dimension, pointwise lower dimension, and uh, for any point, for every point in a set of positive measure, then you will have the same lower bound for the house of dimension of this set of positive measure. And here, and here our goal is to show that the house of dimension of set S is greater or equal to delta. And to prove this, it suffices to show that the Hausdorff dimension of C is greater or equal to delta. Because C is containing S. Remember C is defined to be the set of all possible outcomes of the game. And here we also assume that Alice plays according to her winning strategy. So Alice is winning. And as a result, this guy will be contained in S. So now it suffices to give a lower bound for the dimension of C. And now for X in C, and now for X in C, let's give an estimate of the lower pointwise dimension of mu at x. This is by definition the limb if when rho goes to zero of the logarithm of mu of the ball centered x naught with radius rho divided by Log logarithm of rho with some efforts and you can prove that you can pass this limit to a subsequence limit of the logarithm of the measure of the ball centered at x with radius rho sub k remember rho sub k shrinks to zero geometrically divided by logarithm of rho sub k. And remember, remember our second claim here. 
in particular this inequality, you know that this guy that this guy is bounded below but the limb if of the same thing with this x changes to x sub k now you use this claim 2 again and conclude that this guy, the last term is equal to the limb if of the summation i from 0 to k of the logarithm of the number of elements in a sub k divided by logarithm of k times the logarithm beta plus log of rho naught. Remember, uh, this denominator is follows from the definition of the rho sub k. And the numerator follows from the, the claim 2 here, which says this guy, because of the independence and the uniform choices, is just the uh, this is just the product of the probability in each step. Now, this last term, the definition, is just the lower delta of script A, which is greater or equal to delta because Alice the second half of the proof, namely, the left hand side is bounded above by the right hand side, follows basically by the same idea, but the construction of the, the winning strategy is much more complicated. And at this point, I'm not sure I will make a video on the proof of that part as well.